So welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am really thrilled to be here with Emily Ransom, who is based in the San Francisco Bay Area over in the US. And Emily is not only a professional EOS implementer, but she has actually used EOS in her businesses and also run businesses without using EOS. So she's got this great knowledge of how to use EOS in a business and how to, we're going to talk about pivoting a business as well. So welcome, Emily. Lovely to have you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, oh, Deborah. Oh. I'm really looking forward to hearing your story. So uh, what I'd like to do, Emily, is just start off. Could you give us a little bit of a, a background about your story and uh, okay. within that, give us a professional and personal success as well? Sure. Uh, I think the easiest way to sum it up is these days I'm enjoying a very multifaceted career, I like to say. And um, it's because I'm living kind of my dream uh, career life, if you will. And I've, I've crafted it intentionally over time. And so uh, the first facet of that is business related. So I co-own a, a furniture business enterprise and I can share more about that in a moment. And then I'm also a, a professional business coach. And then I'm also a published author, a little Ooh. known fact. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, I also facilitate a monthly peer group helping uh, business owners and leaders kind of sort through their biggest challenges. And so it's, it's a lot of fun. These days I'm having a lot of fun and I couldn't do that if I weren't living what we call the EOS life. So yeah. um, if you'd like me to dive into that, I'm happy to. Yeah, please tell us a bit more about, you know, what that looks like for you. Yeah. So you mentioned this in the intro and I appreciate that. I have run a business without EOS and I've run a business with EOS. Now let me explain what that means. Um, when I first got into entrepreneurship, I didn't know what I was doing. It's not like I went to school and learned how to run a business. And at the time I found this business was in need of a turnaround situation. It was a $13 million office furniture dealership down in the Southwest part of the United States. And uh, it was just um, so much fun to dig into. And yet I could have done it better. Now that I know what I know, yep. it would have been easier and faster. And so when I moved into the opportunity to buy in as, as third owner of a $50 million office furniture dealership, my two partners and I quickly realized that we really wanted to come together and figure out our vision for where we wanted to take the company. And so uh, luckily at that time, I was a part of a peer group uh, and in that group, I heard about EOS, which is the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's a way of operating and running a business more effectively and efficiently so that you can get more out of the business and actually enjoy the business more. Yeah. And so uh, we quickly adopted the tools and principles embarked on the, the EOS journey. And within two short years, we were looking for ways to burn cash. I'm not kidding. It was actually really fun. We were taking really fun uh, executive retreats to places like Tulum and Cabo San Lucas and Fiji. And then we started, we self-funded two startups to the tune of $2 million, million each. Not kidding. And so the first one is on ice. The second one is off the ground. We have liftoff. We're super excited. And quite literally, we couldn't have been changing our business model from a standard kind of outdated, boring, office furniture dealership model to this new direct to consumer business model if we weren't operating with a common language, a common set of tools, a common vision. And so it really helped us be able to fly the plane yep. and change the make and model of the plane while we were in flight. flying. That's how I can best describe it to you. <laughs> and so now our business is about taking all the inefficiencies out of our sector of the commercial real estate industry. And so what we do is we act as kind of the, the, the manufacturer, so the, the maker of the products, yep. all the way through to the delivery and service end. Whereas before it was like, you'd go see one entity for this and then hopefully they would work with this entity for that. And so it was, it was a lot of cooks in the kitchen yes. and a lot of extra time and a lot of extra money. And so now we source stuff directly, kind of like what you find in the mattress industry. It's called a direct to consumer business model. Mm. It used to be that you would go to the mattress store. Yeah. Now you just buy your mattress online or think about Warby Parker. They yes. upset the glasses industry in the mm -hmm. same way or away luggage. There's so many now that are really relevant in the, the retail sector. And so we're just bringing that same model over to the business sector. And it has just been so much fun. So we, we save clients time because our yep. products are in stock. And then we save them money because we're their source, right? It's the yeah. whole source. And so we save them up to 30 or 40%. 
And so that's been really fun. And quite literally, again, we couldn't be doing what we did over the past several years, especially during a pandemic. Yes. That would sink most startups. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have done it if we weren't running on EOS. And so I jokingly say I'm the poster child of EOS, but it's kind of true. I think you are. And so, uh, you know, I I followed my my passion uh, and became a professional EOS implementer a couple of years ago. And now I've, I've carved out day-to-day operational time from the, the Magnus, which is our direct-to-consumer startup, mm-hmm. so that I can focus on other things that I truly enjoy. So I sit on the board of, of two nonprofit uh, entities and then also am a, a business coach, actually teaching these tools and principles to other business leaders and owners. And it's I just light up at the end of a session day. I am so electrified. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I the feeling. I kind of wonder like what's, uh, what's in my water, but no, it's so true. I just yep. I get so excited for seeing what is possible for these clients mm-hmm. and what they're capable of. And I can almost see two to three steps ahead where they're heading. And I kind of joke because it's like the EOS gods are smiling down on you, yep. but it's true. They, they start to, to uh, em- embody and, and bring things in to their business that they never thought possible. And so it's just, it's been so rewarding for me. Um, it just really has. And, you know, a part of that journey was writing my, my book, Growth Junkies Unite. And it's because, you know, we all go through this cycle in our, our career, in our lives, where we need something to kind of reinvigorate, whether you're yeah. early in your journey and you're kind of learning some of these tools or you're later in your journey and you're kind of burned out. So I, I jokingly say this is a simple, it could, because it is, guide to invigorate your journey. It's quite literally because it's, this is me. It's yep. full of bullet points and you know, little it. factoids and, you know, it's a quick read. I mean, you yes. can literally read this in 20 to 30 minutes, but it's got a, it's jam packed full of great nuggets. And it's meant to, to get someone ready to dive back in, you know, yep. to engage in that, that hunger for growth. Because in my mind, you're, you're at two ends of a stick. You're either growing or dying mm-hmm. and you know, I'd rather be at that growth end of that stick. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of my little nugget that I guess I would share is to, to always be striving for that growth. Right. And I think that's why, you know, EOS is just such a great fit for me because I'm always looking for ways to grow and improve. So perfect. I'll stop there. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, we get taught in universities and things that there's this classic kind of growth curve that just goes like they're, they're on hockey stick and and business mm-hmm. isn't like that, right? We all know that there are points that the business gets to where it hits the ceiling yep. and just can't seem to get past that. What would you say are the sort of the hitting the ceiling moments in your business before you kind of brought EOS mm-hmm. into it? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we were the biggest. This was an office furniture dealer that that was kind of well known in the, the, the San Francisco Bay area and frankly, up and down the West coast, yep. uh, had all these awards and accolades. And I gotta be honest with you, before I came into the picture, zero profit dollars to show for it. And so oh, really? we knew we really needed to retrench and retool. Yep. And so because of that, you know, we didn't want to lose the, the flavor, the essence of, of what Sidemark had embodied. Um, you know, we were proud of that. And yet we, we knew we wanted to do something more innovative. Mm-hmm. This side of our, our commercial real estate industry is just stale. There's been very little innovation. And so, you know, this is our attempt to shake things up and basically say, you know, look, we can do it better. Yeah. So um, people are starting to sit up and take notice. It's been really rewarding and really fun. So is there a particular tool in the EOS that is kind of the hero tool for you? Yeah, I, I think there's a few on the personal level. So one yeah. is the delegate and elevate mm-hmm. tool. And, you know, early in your journey, that's not possible because capacity, your time capacity is a huge issue. You know, you're just trying to stay afloat. You feel like that hamster on the treadmill that just can't get off. Yep. As you get into your journey with EOS using the tools and principles, the thing that will happen is this this magical ability to uh, start to understand how to better delegate in order for you to be able to do what you love to do and are best at, which gives you energy, right? Yeah. You end your day feeling excited about what you're doing rather than depleted, which then starts to lead to stress, which starts to lead to illness, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so that was a big one for me was really finding that sweet spot. And some of that is learning what to say no to. Sure. So the, the 
on the, the macro side, on the, the, the business side, the team side for Magnus, it's really that vision traction organizer, which is a two page strat planning document that is so powerful yet so simple and effective. Mm -hmm. And it's because it keep, it grounds us, it keeps us on the same page. It keeps us all uh, ignited, funneled in that same direction and crystal clear on our, our top priorities. And so with a literally a two page document, something powerful and profound happens, it's the compound effect or it's the force magnifier. You're getting not just one or two people that might have this vision in their head. You're getting all these people in your organization fired up and excited. Yeah. And the, the, the capacity to make that happen then is taken off the, the owner's shoulders, right? Or the, the business, um, the leadership team's shoulders. And it, it makes it so that you have kind of this common galvanizing energy that moves you forward. And it's almost like a, a force takes over. Or, you know, in the example um, that you hear so often, it's the flywheel. Once you get the, the actual yeah. wheel spinning, you know, the momentum will start to carry itself. It's just like that. So that vision traction organizer was really profound for us, making that change from a, from a different business model to the direct-to-consumer model. Perfect. And you've talked about obviously running a business without EOS. Um, would you say that you actually had a plan back in those days? Were Did people know what you were trying to do? Like, I guess I'm trying to understand the difference between where you sure. were when you weren't using EOS and what EOS then did for you. Sure. You know, I think uh, I luckily the, the, the president and owner, this is a family owned business in the Southwest, uh, was incredibly savvy, ran a very sound business. And yeah. so I could learn drafting off of that strategic planning element that, that he would have us as the leadership team do. Uh, and so that was very helpful. And then on top of that, um, you know, I think because we had a, a good team in place already, I always say, if you can focus on getting the right people, the rest of stuff just really starts to take care of itself. All yeah. those those issues that nag at you will start to get easier over time if you have the right people. Mm. If you don't, then everything's magnified times 10 and it's just going to take you longer and it's going to feel like you're pushing that boulder uphill. And so because of those two elements, I feel like I, I was fortunate. And really, you know, it was just taking the business from uh, the vision of, of the previous general manager yep. to where I saw it needed to go and working through some kinks or bugs along the way. And luckily, you know, I kind of had some, some of my own tools at the time in terms of how to make sure that I was getting the team focused and headed in the right direction. I just didn't have an easy two page document to warehouse it, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's really the difference is that uh, it could have been much more simplified and more effective if I would have had those tools. Yeah. So really that's the difference. I must, I must agree. I mean, I, I've spent 25 years running businesses for other people and then my own businesses. And I also coached for 10 years before I even took on board EOS. And nice. a lot of the stuff was using tools that I'd come across, things I intuitively did. But what I loved yeah. about EOS when I came across it was just the simplicity and the framework that just makes it. So the VTO is, is an absolute, you know, um, dream tool to work with uh, but right. all of the tools are, are all just really really simple but structured which gives well, people packaged. a framework yeah the thing I love is that it's packaged in a way that you don't have to think about it yeah and if you have a great coach that takes you through it step by step they have the 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 the, the weight on their shoulders to make sure that you're learning what you need when you need it you yeah. don't have to think about that you just start plugging in and running your business. The, the, the issue with without EOS was that I was trying to find these tools on my own. Yes, I was yes. trying to learn them while I was running the business, which who has time for that? Yeah. You know, it, it was just, um, it, it felt like I didn't know what I was doing. And so I was just grabbing at everything. And so it, for, for a team, what that feels like is, is oh, well, Emily's just going to bring us the workshop du jour, right? <laughs> and if yes. we just hold out long enough, it'll go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that was, that was one of the things that I really appreciated was this was, you know, a, just a completely packaged set of tools. And it yeah. was a journey that if I just plugged in, it would start to take care of itself. Yeah, you got to do the work because it's like building a muscle. It's like yeah. training for a triathlon. Because, you know, if you've, if you've never done those three sports in tandem, 
you know, it can be, you're using all these different muscle groups. It's the same with adopting something like this, you know, whether you're, you're building a true iOS operating system or a business operating system, you're having to learn a whole new set of, of uh, principles and tools. And so, you know, it still takes time and effort and yet yeah. it also can be fun and much easier, especially with the right coach. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. for us there, Deborah. Oh, it's thank you for fun. that. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's interesting because <laughs> I remember when I was um, GM of a, so a reasonably large organization, well, large for New Zealand, tiny for the US, but we had 220 staff and I was GM nice. there. And I decided that I needed some tools and I went and did my MBA. And to be honest, um, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do it again because I actually found that none of it was actually really useful when it came to running the business. I mean, it was wonderful, yes. the sort of the, the things that you learned. And, and yeah, I wouldn't, I don't, I won't, don't say I regret it, but I probably wouldn't do it again if I had a chance because yes. I just felt it didn't really add to the running of the business. Um, and there was, it was just a little bit too... Um, what's the right word? A, a bit academic, I suppose, in terms of, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I always say, go get your real life MBA. Yeah. I mean, there's so much in terms of resources uh, now that are free. Yes. That, I mean, if you can kind of figure out where and how to plug in, mm. in a way that kind of streams, streamlines it, right? You, because when you, you Google something like growth or, or culture, like these yeah. big yeah. wide open <laughs> things are right. You're going to get a million hits, right? So you got to know where to funnel that in, but at the same time, it, it's out there readily available for you. Yeah. And I like, yeah. I like what you're saying. Cause I always say that too, get your real life MBA. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And I think that the one thing I loved about EOS, so um, I actually came across it cause they launched into New Zealand using my event space and I didn't actually get to the presentation, but I got left a copy of the books that get a grip and traction. And I just read ah. it and I went, Oh my gosh, this is like my entire, 50 years of my life has now been packaged down into two books that, yes. that make it really easy to explain what it is that I do. But what I also yes. love is that, you know, we have this amazing community. So that what there's, you know, there's three or 400 of us around the world that we can actually tap into. So it's not as if you're only working with one person as your coach, you are literally having access to that entire community of people who are doing it. And the tool, you know, the stuff that EOS Worldwide provides us yeah. with to actually support our clients is just fantastic. It's world-class. Yeah. 100%. I agree. Yeah. Fully okay. Agree. So if in terms of tips for um, people who are perhaps feeling like they're a little bit stuck, you know, we've had a really tough year with COVID. We've had a lot of things going on. Right. Maybe they feel like they've, they've just stopped growing and they want to get reinvigorated. What would you recommend they do to start that process? Yeah. So uh, three quick uh, hits, which we, we've already kind of been hitting on them. So this should just all fall in line. Yeah. The first is uh, I, I give a workshop that's really popular right now called Drop the Ball. And I think it's because we all struggle with what we can say no to these days, especially uh, post COVID where no one, no one wrote the rule book, right? For the past <laughs> year and a half to two years, there's been no, no guidebook for any of us. And so it's been like, you know, kind of making it up as we go along, or, or as I was describing earlier, kind of flying the plane and also, you know, making sure that you're not having to fly it with duct tape and bailing wire, right? <laughs> so I, I feel like that one is huge, figuring out what you can say no to. And so some of these these tools that we just talked about, like the Delegate and Elevate tool is a great one. Yeah, it's um, one of my there's, favorites. there's several of these, um, but I feel like that's an important thing to start figuring out is what you can say no to. So develop some filters. And I think the Vision Traction Organizer, it doesn't just have to be for business. You can make a personal two-page strat plan yeah. for your career. And if you do that, you're gonna figure out what to say no to a lot easier. So that's the first one. The second one- And you can also is, use it for your family life too. Sorry to interrupt, but I, I you know, there's a lot of EOS yes. guys that are actually using it for their family life. Because again, it just gives such a huge clarity around what is important. And then it yes. makes those decisions a hell of a lot easier. So, you know, yes. you, can, you can actually say hell yes or hell no, I suppose. Well, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, that's a great point because uh, I've heard this phrase before. If it's not a hell yes, then it's probably a no. So that's a great point you make there. The uh, second one, uh, I, I love to say is develop your superpower. And in my mind, your superpower is learning emotional intelligence. And the first thing about emotional intelligence is self-awareness. Yep. The second part of this equation is awareness of others. And that means really learning to harness the ability to read a room, uh, read body language, yeah. uh, read the situation and start to think about things, not just from your vantage point, but from others. So another workshop that I lead is called um, 
social styles, literally leveraging your superpower because it is the quintessential thing in communication amongst teams that goes awry. I'll give you a quick example. On yeah. my team, we have multifunctional, cross-functional teams, right? So you've got an account manager that's client facing, the one that wants to get the client to the yes and is making all these promises. Then yep. you've got, you know, the, the um, customer service person who's like the one to kind of the wizard up behind the curtain, making things happen. You've got a designer that wants to kind of tell you if you can or can't per regulations and code. And then you've got a project manager that's making sure the service end is happening. Well, these people are coming from different sides and they have different communication styles. Mm -hmm. So if you have a driver that's talking to an amiable, they're gonna rub each other the wrong way time and again. Yep. And so this workshop really gives you the tools to be able to start to learn it's situationally how to see these things in advance and how to be able to have these conversations so you can both get what you need out of that dialogue, right? I mean, it's, yep. it's getting both of you to the yes. It doesn't have to be win or lose. It can be win-win. And so figuring out how to get there with these tools. And then the third thing that I would suggest is what we've been talking about, which is get your real life MBA. Yeah. Be hungry. Be hungry for it. You know, it's out there. And so if you have a personal VTO, like what we've been saying, a personal plan yep. for your career or for your life, the things that are most important to you, then you can start to funnel into how to get those tools and resources that you need. And a lot of that stuff is available online for free. And if it's not free, it's pretty darn inexpensive these days. Yeah. And so you don't have to necessarily go back to school. I'm not, I'm not saying don't go back to school if that's the right thing for you. Do what you need to do. I'm just saying there's so much available out there. And so have the hunger to go, go out there and get it. I'm self-taught. Yeah. I am, I am self-taught and I, I feel no shame in that, no shame at all. And so one of the things with my book, the Growth Junkies Night book, I provide actually the toolkit, all of my source material. Okay. I literally provide it as a free toolkit because I want people to have like my top 10 TED, TED Talks. Yes. I want them to know where I sourced everything because that's what I did, right? Yeah. You start to cull through all the mountains of information into the best, the best stuff, nuggets that really serve you well, and then grab onto those, right? Mm -hmm. So get your real life MBA. So those are my Fantastic. top three. Lovely. Tips. I actually do something similar. I have a weekly newsletter that I send out where I just curate uh, three things each week that I've kind of come across that are my favorite TED talk or my favorite tool. And, and just right. because there is so much stuff out there and it is overwhelming at times to go, you know, well, what should I be doing? What should I be listening to? Hey, there's um, right. the new Rocket Fuel University had that I saw EOS have actually launched um, in the last couple of weeks, which is really great for that whole visionary integrator relationship and to sort of learn more about how that works. So there's just yeah. so much stuff, as you said, that is free that you can you can get great advice from and and peer yes. group support because I think you mentioned at the beginning you know having peer groups can be really important in terms of being able to share openly and honestly within a you know a different environment as opposed to your own team oh I, I highly recommend that get your board of advisors get your board of directors yep. your personal board of directors is what I'm talking about Yes, because, you know, you don't have to go spend thousands and join a peer group if you don't want to. You can build your own group uh, out of, you know, the people that you can help and that that you that you need. Yeah. Um, and that kind of comes back to, you know, now that the tips are coming full circle, knowing what ball to drop. You know, yeah. you've, again, there's such mountains of information out there, such wealth of uh, opportunity and how do you know how to navigate that and filter it right down to mm -hmm. the best few? And in my mind, you can't do that unless you've got kind of a, a personal plan and some of these decision-making gov governors, literally these decision gates that give you that yes, no, you know, kind of project flow, if you will. Yeah. And so, you know, just to kind of tie this up with a bow, those three kind of go all hand in hand, really. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Hey, so it sounds like your book is a great tool to get started on this journey. Uh, where would we find that? Where would the, the listeners find your book? Growthjunkiesunite.com. And yep. uh, if people want to reach out, I do have a VIP code. So you can get half off if you come through me. And I okay. do ship internationally. Excellent. So there you go. Happy to do that. And I also have the free PDF too. So if somebody wants it that way, I'm happy to send that. Happy to send the free toolkit if they just want that as well. Cool. So what we'll do is I'll grab that information from you afterwards and I'll publish that on the site with the podcast. Perfect. Um, and in terms of working with you, I mean, I'm again, plugging ourselves. I know it so, sounds a bit 
but, but it's, it's true. I mean, I, I know that personally, I actually also have a coach, right? Because I think that you right. need someone to actually better see things from the outside in. And that's really important. And whilst there's a lot of stuff that you can do that you can self implement, it's great. I really think that accountability and having somebody, the coach that looks in from the outside is really important. So I can see your passion. Um, I'm, I'm, your, your clients must love working with you. What's your kind of ideal client from an EOS perspective? And how would they get hold of you? Yeah, definitely um, not afraid of, of change and growth. You know, yep. they, they've got to be hungry. Yep. They've got to be willing to kind of look at, at what they're doing that's contributing to what's working, but also what's not working. Like celebrate what got you to here, but let's realize together that that's not going to get you to where you want to go, right? You've got to evolve. You've got to grow or die, frankly. It's yep. two ends of that stick, like I said. And so really I'm looking for that kind of, model. you know, I want to make sure that the mojo of the leadership team is really going to have the courage and bravery to look at themselves, look at each other and, and be able to do what needs to happen to build that muscle that we talked about. So yeah. that's, yeah. that's the right mojo fit for me, for sure. Perfect. I'm just going to cough. Excuse me a second. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, something went down my throat the wrong way. Anyway. Bless you. Thank you. Um, and but so how do they get in contact? Opportune times. <laughs> how do they get in contact with you if they'd like to work with you, Emily? Sure. So my uh, EOS email is emily, E-M-I-L-Y yeah. dot ranson, R-A-N-S-O-N-E. And those are both N as in Nancy. So emily dot ranson at eosworldwide.com. Fantastic. There you go. Wonderful. Hey, look, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, I, I didn't realize your story. And so it's just so nice to actually have a chance to hear that and, and also feel your passion. I mean, that's again, a part of the thing I love about the whole EOS community is that we're all business owners. We've all been there, done that, got the t-shirt and we're passionate yes. about helping other people get to that same place. So um, yes. I love, I always love talking to other EOS implementers and other business owners. I'm forever grateful to my EOS implementer. I, yeah. I really am. There weren't any in the Bay Area and, and at the time, and we, we brought her up from LA, and she was the one that encouraged me to become a professional EOS implementer. And I'm forever grateful because I'm truly living what we talk about in terms of that EOS life. I really yeah. feel so grateful. So thank you, Deborah. This has been so fun. It has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for giving me the time. Um, I know it's a different time zone where you are. So thanks for you know taking time out in the middle of All your day. Good. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay, sounds good. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks very much.